Jason Williams, what's up, brother? How are you tonight? Man, I'm wonderful. Living living life to this, to its fullest right now. Cool, man. I'm glad you could join us, man. And it's uh, it's fitting uh, that we're having this month and even next month, actually, but specifically September, bringing on uh, retired military, first responders, law enforcement, just uh, people in public service, um, because it, it is a unique month. It's a special month, given what happened 20 years ago uh, with 9-11. And so I really wanted to honor people who are in a daily service of, of either our country or just the public. And so I'm glad you came on. I'm, I'm thankful to, to have you. And, uh, you know, Jason and I know each other audience. Um, he is, let me just give you a little bit of his background. So he, he was in, in the late nineties, he was in the, the air air force. Okay. And he was stationed out West in Washington state. And then, uh, was a loadmaster on C one forty ones and C 17s did a deployment to Saudi Arabia. Um, and, and from 06 to now, I guess, he's been in the Houston Fire Department as a uh, captain, captain uh, and a paramedic. And, you know, uh, when I met Jason probably three or four years ago, he has been uh, volunteering at the more prominent, one of the more prominent uh, and largest homeschool baseball academies in the Houston area and coaches summer high school teams as well. Uh, and so I met him with my son and his baseball team and, and just watched Jason volunteer and just give his time. And, you know, he had a son through the program and then, you know, didn't, and he still continued to serve. So that gives you a little idea of the kind of guy Jason is, but I'll tell you from 2019 to now, he's been a major league baseball scout for the Tampa Bay Rays. So man, Jason, I'm glad to have you today. And, uh, anything else you think is important to, to share with the audience about you? Man, you can't. I can't. I can't make it sound any better than you just did. You're making well, me sound really good. You know, it's just got to read the <laughs> teleprompter. No, I want. Uh, I want to meet this guy. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, uh, you know, like I said, it's it's obvious. You know, uh, well, with the goings on in the world and overseas now, and the latest in the in the White House and everything going on. I mean, it's obvious that we're we're in this 20 year uh, anniversary time of 9 11. Um, I, I do want to ask you a question, though, kind of to roll back the clock a little. Do you remember where you were on 9-11 of 2001? And can you maybe process kind of some of your feelings you had and, and, and as that, all that was going on? Absolutely. Uh, my wife and I were just talking about that yesterday, as a matter of fact. Um, we were in Lebanon, Tennessee, living in Lebanon, Tennessee, and I had just gotten off work with the fire department there in Lebanon, Tennessee, and we were I was at home helping my wife get ready for Bible study. And I was on the couch watching the Today Show. I mean, I know specifically exactly where I was uh, at the moment of the first plane strike and then at the moment of the second plane strike. Um, some of my thoughts at that time, I was young and, and really immature to the, the dealings of what was actually happening. Um, I knew something bad was happening, but I just didn't, I couldn't fathom the, the brunt of it. And as I've gotten older and wiser and had a lot of life experiences, it, it's hit home more and more every year. Yeah. And uh, I make a point every year to watch uh, documentaries on the, on the, on the 9-11, just out of respect to those who gave their life, those that, that continue to uh, go out there and serve, not just myself. There's a ton of guys out there that do that. And, yeah. Uh, so just out of, out of respect. So. Yeah. It, and it, it's, man, when you, like you said, we were a little bit naive to some of the enormity of what was happening. And then now you talk about how we reflect on it and we can wrap our brains around it a little more. And then we start to internalize and sort of digest what sacrifices were made. And then the rest, you know, the last 20 years of our military just going to bat for us. Right. And, and standing on that wall for us so that we can, rest our heads every night in peace. Right. And, and I just, I, I don't know, there's no words big enough to really describe what first responders, law enforcement, military do for the common ordinary guy like me. Like there's just no words to big enough to honor that. But um, yeah, I remember where I was too. And, and it was a long time ago, but it, but it sort of feels like yesterday when you watch the footage over again and they start showing it more right now and and through the next week or so you know we're going to see a lot of it and and i mean it literally it seems like it wasn't that long ago do you have those same thoughts oh absolutely absolutely it's a 
every year this the state sneaks up on me and uh, it just relives what I felt that day and, and the, the feelings that I've grown to have uh, every year since. Uh, yeah. I actually got the opportunity to go to New York City several years ago and visit the, the footprints in the, in the, of the towers and go down into the museum. And it was, John, it was so overwhelming that uh, I couldn't finish the tour. Wow. Uh, it was just emotionally uh, overwhelming for me. And I, but I'm, I'm actually going back to New York in two weeks, New York City. To, so I'll be back down there at the, at the footprints. And yeah. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. That's cool. Yeah, that's a. I bet that's a great trip, and I bet just the, the thickness in the air of the emotion and just the whole. If you can factor in the the just that whole situation, like it just probably is very surreal. Well, as we talk about you personally, you know, and, and we're talking about you serving in the fire department, and what made you go into that line of work, man? So my brother was a huge. Um, influence to me uh there's 10 years difference between my brother and i and he joined the houston fire department when i was 10 years old so that made him 20 and i grew up just watching him progress in his career through the fire department and just the old big red truck driving down the road and sirens and helping people and it just it, it appealed to me it was uh it's something that i learned very on that that's what i wanted to do and at 10 years of age to have that focus, uh, it was it was very important to me. So that, yeah. he was my main influence. Yeah, and and I'm sure you got to hear some stories to maybe help you live through his shoes a little bit to make more of an informed decision. Because a lot of us, let's face it, as kids, at one time or another, all said we wanted to be a cop or a fireman. You know, at some point, so, all little boys want to be one of those two uh, or a soldier. Yeah. And and so. Man, I, I think it's cool that you got to relive that or to live that out. But so did anything about that career path surprise you? You know, kind of what you watch from the outside, looking at your brother, and then you get, you know, you're in deep <laughs> with that, uh, living it every day. Is there anything that kind of surprised you that kind of shocked you or you're like, oh, hey, I don't know if I signed up for this kind of thing? Yeah. So what you see on Chicago fire is not uh, reality. They don't oh, have really? uh, the TV's life, not life real. Re <laughs> <laughs> they don't have life-saving rescues and, uh, you know, uh, terrible fires every single day. Um, you know, as I got into the fire service, the, the camaraderie amongst the guys, um, you get a true sense of brotherhood and that means a lot. Um, you put your life on the line and then with each other and, and, you depend on each other and that, that bond right there is something that uh, if you don't ever have that opportunity, you'll never fully understand. Yeah. And, and that, that probably to me was the biggest insight as far as watching my brother and then actually experiencing the careers. Yeah. And, and I imagine, I mean, as with, with shift work like that, I mean, you're, your family, whether you like it or not, man, you're in the, you're in those four walls together for hours upon hours. And not only just the trying to watch each other's back and, and go to bat for each other and, you know, go down the, the hall of a, a fiery building or whatever, you know, together, but just everyday life, like you got to learn to get along and go along and, and it's, it is a family dynamic, but um, yeah. So what, what excites you most? Like what energizes you most when you get out of bed, like, you know, you're on duty and, and like you said, not every day is some spectacular rescue, right. Or, or a, you know, 12 story building on fire, but, but what excites you, what gener energizes you every day when you get up just to keep that passion? You know, that, that's, a, that's an interesting question because I'm fortunate to have a job where I get up in the morning and the hardest part of my day is actually just getting up. But once I'm up, I look forward to going to the job, mm. you know, and I, you can't really call it a job. It's I enjoy going to work to the fire station, and being amongst the guys, um, and just having that that bond with them. And, and, you know, one one old head fireman once told me that the only difference between Boy Scouts and firemen is that we get paid. We act mm -hmm. like kids. We're at the fire station. We, we joke around. We have a great time around the fire station. And then as soon as those bells go off, it's nothing but straight business. Um, mm -hmm. this, the, the fire service offers so many different aspects of life to, from the camaraderie of the guys and, and 
the bond that you have with these guys and mm-hmm. joking around like Boy Scouts to the professional aspect of it, where it can be life threatening. Um, on top of all that, you gotta you gotta have the mentality of a professional athlete. Mm-hmm. That that you have to train your body to to do the job because your life is dependent on it. Your, your, your yeah, coworkers' lives are dependent on it, and your family's life uh, is dependent on it. So. There's two, there's so many aspects of this job that, that it's unfathomable trying to embrace it all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you definitely have to be in shape. I mean, there's no doubt. And and the training you guys do is, I would assume, pretty regular. Um, and so let's talk about, you know, and, and I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. And this I don't think was in. This is a little off script for you, but um, you know, nobody. I, I would assume you're not going to consider yourself a hero of any kind. But in my opinion people that put their life on the line to, to protect and defend the public on a daily basis to me are, he, are heroes. And, and so you could, we can, you know, split hairs on that definition all day long, but what would you say maybe is the most in your opinion, like all of your years of doing this, did you ever have kind of a one incident that you stepped up and you were kind of like, wow, you know, I, I played a significant role in this and I know you didn't use the word hero, but someone outside looking in would have said, Dude, that guy, that was heroic. Anything, anything come to mind that you've done? Anything that's that's kind of crazy out there or that you, you know, that you contributed to that that you would say, wow, that was that was a big deal when you get back and kind of decompress. Yeah, that, that word hero is uh I know. it's kind of funny. Is it's, it's I know. I I've never um it sounds cliche, but I've never considered myself a hero. I I enjoy going out and doing that, uh, trying to affect someone's life in a positive manner because when I respond to them, they're having the worst day of their life. It's mm. my job to try to mitigate that, and make it a better day for them. So to ask me about one specific right. call, I mean, I've had, I've had a number of them that uh, that the life was saved or wow. um, or some hurt was, was lessened. Um, yeah. Have you, it's even been as small as just sitting down with a family member and praying with them. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't have to be some dramatic scene yeah. where you, you pull them out of the, the, gra- the grasps of, of death at the last second. Sometimes yeah. I sit down with them at the, at the couch, living room couch, just say a prayer with them. It's just as life saving as as the actual dramatic absolutely a great answer man i love that because it is it's it's all in perspective and i i think you know different events call for different heroic actions right and so like you said sitting down with somebody that maybe they lost somebody just now or maybe they've suffered some sort of catastrophe and you're in that moment with them and and that to me is again that's right there in that hero column so uh, you know you mentioned faith you mentioned prayer and and uh talk about maybe the way your faith, uh, you know, has come out in that environment, like, you know, uh, firehouse, you know, rugged, tough guys. And, and I, I know that you guys have to be strong and tough and, and uh, you know, Christian warriors, faith warriors out there have to be the same. So man, talk about the impact your faith has had maybe with some of your coworkers, your team, um, like you said, even people that you've been there to respond to in situations. Um, you're right. The, the, the environment that I work in on a daily basis, it's, it's extremely tough to maintain your Christianity, um, at the level that, uh, I think God wants me to, um, have, um, I am not perfect by no means right. I falter on a, falter on a daily basis and really rely on uh, the guys that I work with. Cause there are a number of guys that I work with that are, that are Christians as well. Yeah. Um, I rely on them to, to get me back on the straight and narrow when, when I detour off and, and they do the same, they expect the same from me when they detour off It's to, Hey, let's get back in line. You know, again, we're not perfect and it's extremely hard in, in, in our job that we are confronted with situations that, that provoke language that, that shouldn't be said at times. And well, they and, just test your faith in general, right? Some of the they do. Absolutely. Just test you. Yeah. I mean, because we're, you know, it's, it's very similar to police officers. We are faced with some of the worst people uh, at times in the world. 
some of the most evil people in the world and and sometimes our human emotions get the better of us so yeah i i go back to the bond that i have with the, my co-workers my brothers mm-hmm. and my sisters out there and uh and rely on them to help get me back to that straight and narrow yeah so. yeah well and, and i would imagine you guys have to lean on that too and and maybe some not so pleasant situations that you have to come back to the firehouse after a kind of a tragedy or a, you know, a call that's been traumatic and you guys got to unwind and decompress. And I would imagine you guys kind of go to your own spots and just kind of get alone and, and try to sort those feelings out. And, and, and I'm sure your faith, you know, you've got to get alone and try to go into prayer. I would think at some point to try to get, regain some of that peace. And, and I can only imagine that's a challenge because from the outside looking in the public, you know, your job is a no fail position, right? You can't, fa- you're, it's a, we think you're perfect, I guess, is the best way to say it. You know, from outside looking, the public expects perfection from law enforcement, from firefighters, from military, you know, all this. And uh, I, I just, that's not fair, but, but it's good to hear you talk about transparently that, that there are some times of vulnerability. There are some times where you guys have to check each other and kind of be iron sharpening iron. I think that's great. I mean, that's life. That's anything in life. I mean, so, so you've been in the military, you, you're, you're, um, you know, you're in the firehouse and you're you've been doing this a while. Right. And um, I would imagine you've developed some core competencies, some disciplines, some structure in your life that has carried over into other things. I mean, you're a baseball coach too, uh, in, in many regards, uh, coaching different teams and scouting baseball from professional, at, you know, baseball organizations. Man, what, what disciplines that you created or that the military and, and being in the fire department have created in you that has carried over into life? So that's, that's a great question because Everything that I've done in my life from the military to the fire department to uh, my, my baseball outings and coaching and, and scouting with the, with the Rays, um, literally those have been dreams that I have had. I wanted to be in the military, so I went and got in the military. And I, I did what I had to do in the military. And I, I wanted to be in, uh, a firefighter, so I got out of the military and went into the fire department. These were dreams that I had at, mm-hmm. at a very young age. Um, and then, you know, what kid did not want to be a professional baseball player? I, I didn't make it as a professional baseball player, but I got into professional baseball in some in, in a different angle, right? Yeah. Um, one of the big influences uh, going along with my brother was my grandfather, who was a military guy. So give me a, give me a little latitude here. And, uh, yeah. Let me describe what's going on. Uh, my grandfather was a very disciplined man, very military uh, thought. He's, he, he thought very much like a military man. He was a major in the, in the army. Um, and he was, uh, he just, he just had a lot of expectations. He had a lot of uh, benchmarks that he wanted me to reach on a personal yeah. level and, and, uh, and, and becoming a man. And, and that really grew on me to this day. I, I look back and say, you know, that's because of him or I'm acting this way because of him. My, my work ethic is because of him. And I'm not saying I'm perfect or I have a good work ethic. By, by all means, I'm a procrastinator. But um, he, he was the main source of that, of that discipline. So when I got in the military, that just continued to develop my, my discipline and my work ethic and, and my organizational skills and, and my leadership skills. And then going into the fire department just continued to grow that as well. And it expanded more and more as I got, as I promoted through the fire department into the captain rank where I'm actually one of the, the officers of the fire department now and expected to lead guys. Um, and then in the, in the, in coaching baseball, what, what greater job to have than have young men's lives uh, mm-hmm. and, and trying to develop their lives in, in the environment of baseball, but in a bigger picture in, in their young development as young men as well. Um, what an honor that parents allow us to have that, that opportunity. Um, yeah. and, and should be held with the greatest regards from my side of it because I, I do have a huge influence on a lot of these kids. Mm-hmm. So I take that very seriously. And I really fall back on my personal work ethic and discipline and try to promote that to those boys as well. So. Yeah, yeah. And, and I see it like I, the, the common denominator, I think, too, with you. And I don't know if you got that from him or – if it developed throughout, but you're always in this service 
mentality of how can I be, make it bigger than me or how can it be about somebody else? Like I, I don't ever see you trying to make anything about you. And, and that's what I think a lot of the people in the service industry, you know, I would think at their core are about, you know, because why else would they go out in the craziest hours of the night and put their life on the line for strangers? Right. So, I mean, but I see it in you and, and I see it in the kids that, you know, that you coach, of course, I have a son that that's there and, and I get to see it firsthand, but that's yeah. one common denominator I've always seen in you. So I think that's, that's pretty cool. The only, the only person that really gets to see the selfish side of me is my wife. and She's the only one that can handle that. So uh, I do my best because I'm a very selfish person uh, by nature. Uh, I try to do exactly that. I try to serve as much as I possibly can to humble myself. Mm -hmm. and, and I rely on my wife to uh to take that brunt of my selfishness and she is very very capable of that so hey hey 20, I, I know you well enough years to years. know i know you well <laughs> enough to know that she's the real hero in this whole thing oh absolutely <laughs> you know we if it, going back to the the whole uh do i rely on or relying on my coworkers to keep me on the straight and narrow with my faith at work you know when when all else fails she's the one that i i call up on the phone and say hey you know i need to talk and she, she's that rock. So that's I awesome. Give her all the credit. That's awesome. Well, as we move through here, I, I kind of want to hear what you would say to yourself. If we were to maybe turn back the clock and you could sit across the table from a, a, a Jason Williams, that's about to enter the fire department, let's say, um, what kind of, what kind of thing would you tell yourself? What kind of advice would you give yourself? If you could, you know, be the, the whole, I've traveled this road, young man, Here's what you need to really keep focus on. This is what I wish someone would have told me. What would what would that be look like? That would be a that's a that's a hard question. Yeah. Um. I I pride myself on my on my dedication, and my my work ethic, but there's always room for improvement. Um, I get easily distracted when it comes to rumors and. and emotions that are not mm -hmm. uh justified um and so i guess if i had to tell myself anything it would be grow up faster and, and get the job done quicker um my grandfather said it best when i messed up he he had one word that rings in my ears today and that is careless don't be careless mm. and I, so i strive every day to not be careless in the sense of being a father, being a husband, uh, being a leader to my guys at work. Uh, and then me, per me personally, I'm, I'm really hard on myself. I mean, if I forget something, if I have to go back and get something, that's careless. I should have thought of that before I left. Small stuff like that. So yeah, if I if I if I had to say anything to myself, don't be careless. Would you so, Would you say you're a perfectionist? Like you hold yourself to a higher standard than anybody else does, pretty much? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, if, you, if, so, you, if you go ahead. No, I was just going to say, so if you were to talk to your a younger version of yourself, would you say maybe give yourself a break sometimes? Or would you say, hey, man, you got to expect perfection. You may never hit it, but you should expect it. One of those kind of that, things. That's one of the that's one of the problems with being a perfectionist is you don't uh, you don't yield yourself a break because uh, you're always trying to get get a little bit better. Get that one percent better than I one percent that I preach that I preach to the boys every day. You know, uh, so now granted, I do take my breaks because I'm selfish and I'm a procrastinator, and, uh, but mentally I am a perf perfectionist and I yeah. cannot yield that, that break time because someone's always trying to get that, that job ahead of me. So, yeah, well, you know, I, I got a couple more for you here and, and these are kind of, I kind of like these just cause it may stretch us, uh, some, but you know, in your opinion, from what you're seeing on a daily basis, when you're out in the field on a call and, and, and you kind of, you can hear, you know, different people's bystanders or you watch the news or whatever, in your opinion, what, what would you say are, are some misconceptions that the public has about your job as a firefighter? Um, yeah. So one, one common misconceptions is that we can solve everything from how to pull someone out of a fire to how to put them in a car seat. That's one of the common misconceptions. And then going back to my original uh, comment earlier, earlier on was uh, we're not Chicago Fire, so there's not a 
one of the common misconceptions is, is that we're uh, saving lives every single day. And that's not always the case. You guys don't so, have a film crew that follows you around? Is that what you're saying? Oh, I'm you're actually kind of reality je- show. Yeah, I'm kind of jealous that I haven't had that yet. I've been waiting for my film crew to show up, but nobody yeah. shows up. This may be as good as it gets right here. This may be the only camera that's on <laughs> you. Uh, no. So, okay. So, I mean, we can't get around talking about this for a second. And and I, I know this could potentially be Pandora's box and, and we could just open up a huge can of worms. But, I mean, given the latest couple of weeks of, of just the joke that is our government, um, Afghanistan, you've been in the, you know, you've been in the military, you're close enough to know, uh, you know, even as long ago as it was, you kind of have a perspective that applies to that. But I want to make you president for a day. Oh no. And you weren't, you weren't prepared for this, but I'm just going to ask you maybe a couple things in your opinion. Give me two things. If you had the presidential crystal ball, um, what would Jason Williams do? What would be the first thing you do as president? If you were president for a day? Oh, wow, man. Just you one. Yeah, it's hard to pick just one, right? <laughs> <laughs> you are putting me on the spot. So, um, yeah, no oof. kidding. If I was president for a day, oof. All I first responders get a, get a $10,000 a month raise. Oh, uh, well, that, that's not good. <laughs> Can't really that do it. <laughs> yeah, we, we're, we're, in, we're in battle with our city government right now. Yeah, so, I hear you. Uh, all right, so president, yeah. let's go, president. President Williams. for a day. President for the day. Uh, I'm all about fairness. Mm. And I'm all about, that doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's equal uh, or everybody deserves everything equally. Uh, I'm a, very much a believer in, in uh, this nation and the opportunities that this nation gives you in, in, in succeeding and getting better. And I think that you should you should reap the, Reap the the your you should enjoy what you've earned is what I'm trying to say. Take advantage of the be, opportunities. It should, it should be your it should be your your joy. I mean, it shouldn't be, belong to anybody else. So I would make sure that that, that capitalism and, and and land of opportunity, land of freedom maintains as much as I possibly can. Pretty generic answer, but that's the best I got for you right now. Yeah, no, I hear you. Well, that was a, I mean, that was off script, and I'll, I'll be doing that for everybody. So don't feel picked on. I mean, I'll, I'll be asking everybody that question, and I don't even know how I would answer that to be honest. There's the list is so long. Great question. You know, the list is so long of what we would change. You know, it gets longer every day. (laughs) Well, hey, I I mean, I, I, I want to just give you a chance to maybe. Pour into somebody right now that's listening that is maybe on the fence about joining uh, a public service, like the fire department, first responder of some kind, law enforcement, uh, military. Uh, Somebody's on the fence. Give them a reason, maybe um, why they should, or maybe give give your opinion to them as to what benefits could be there for them if they do. John, I I come home from work every day, regardless of how many calls we make or how many lives I've touched, I have a sense of accomplishment every single day I come home. Um, And that accomplishment could be at the highest level. It could be as small as me walking back through my front door and and loving on my my wife and kids. Uh, I've accomplished something every day I come home from work. Uh, That's what this job offers. On the other side, there again, all the aspects, all the different angles that this job offers from... uh, from being a, a person in someone else's life that makes a difference to being a friend and a coworker with buddies that you will give your life for. Um, yeah. To being a leader in the world is, is it, to me, it offers every, everything. So yeah. um, I, I, I live, I live every day that I go to work with a, with a great saying that Martin Luther King used to say, and that was uh, a genuine leader is, one that doesn't seek consensus, but molds consensus. And I live by that on a daily basis. I try to mold my my subordinates, and not just my subordinates, but every everybody that I come in contact with. I try to mold them into a, a good person as much as I possibly can. And, and, and then in the same respect, show them that I, I try to be as good a, a person as I, as I want them to be. So 
Yeah. What a great profession that, that allows me to do that. And, and not just the fire service, but in, through the military when I was in the military and going overseas and, and, and through baseball. Um, yeah, my, my life is engulfed with trying to make people better. Yeah. So, uh, and and it sounds it. like it sounds like to me that you've 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 kind of cornered, cornered the market of significance. Like everything you've done has has had some level of significance and and that's what matters. And that's what I think people are gonna hear you say is that you've got a purpose and you're on purpose every day. Nothing's nothing's an accident in your life, and you're constantly intentional about finding people to make better and to serve. And that's what I see. And, and so that to me equates to significance. And so I think we can lay our head on the pillow every night and be at peace with that. And uh, I got one final question for you and, uh, and then we'll rack up, wrap up. Who wins the world series? Oh, Tampa Bay Rays. Tampa Bay Rays world series <laughs> champions. You heard it. You heard it from president Williams. <laughs> yeah. Without a doubt. All right, Too man. Strong. Well, hey, I, be, I appreciate you being on uh, today. It's been a pleasure having you. And audience, I hope you enjoyed this. This has been a blessing for me. Until next time, he's been Jason William. We've been last in line. Be blessed. Heroes never die.